New Hasbro, G.I. Joe, Marvel, and Star Wars listings hit the net. New images for the Transformers Masterpiece Tigertron. Mezco freezes out their 112 collective line and the effects of the coronavirus on the toy industry. All that and more in today's news video. So let's jump in. Hey all you action figure enthusiasts out there, JC here with another TNI news video. We've got a lot to cover today, so we're going to just jump right into it. And first thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is uh, something I'm sure every time you turn on the news these days you're hearing about, and that is the coronavirus. Obviously, this is something that has uh, global ramifications far beyond the toy industry, far beyond those of us who collect. But that is where I'm primarily going to be focusing uh, my discussion on this. Now, now, first thing, let me just say, I hope everybody out there watching stays safe, stays healthy. Obviously, there's still, you know, there's right now, there's no vaccine for this disease. And as I understand it, it's probably going to be a year before they actually have a viable vaccine for it. And obviously, this is a huge problem and not just due to health concerns, but but how it's going to affect uh, our way of life in general. Um, and it, it's probably this, this year, it's not going to be good. Um, if, if I'm being quite frank with you, uh, we're already seeing the impact, um, where events are being canceled. It was just announced that the Emerald city comic con in Seattle, Washington has been postponed until the summer. Um, other events outside the toy industry are being canceled left and right. Um, movies even the newest james bond movie they delayed its release until november because they're afraid people weren't going to go to the theaters to see it so they pushed that back so um just a lot of things and honestly you know where i see this uh, being the most devastating is how it's going to affect the global economy i do feel there's a very good chance that this could send uh, the world into a recession of of type so um you know again obviously you know you don't want to downplay the health concerns but to me, where this is going to do the most damage is with the economy itself, um, which means people start losing their jobs. It means, you know, things like that. So um, as far as the toy industry itself goes, you know, I, I think you, it's safe to say you're going to expect delays of product getting to shelf. Uh, multiple companies have already come out. Um, there was some talk about this at Toy Fair. I wrote an article on TNI uh, the other week about this. Uh, where companies were expecting to at least to have some minor delays and a lot of this is going to depend on how long this drags out um obviously so you know if it the longer it drags out the worse you know the worse the delays are likely going to be the worse the impact is going to be and things and, and such which are really honestly right now is just kind of an unknown but definitely i think it's safe to say you're going to expect some delays and products getting to shelves i think you've already started to see that i know some smaller companies have started uh telling people that products are going to be delayed from the original release dates. Even Hasbro has come out and said, um, I saw a CNN article where Hasbro was indicating that there could be some delays with product. Um, Baby Yoda is what they were talking about specifically. But I think it just across the board, you can expect delays uh, from pretty much all the companies. Uh, a lot of, some companies have started to diversify for where their products are made. You know, China was the main place. And that's where this virus started from, China. It has spread, it has since spread. It is here in the United States. Um, right now, the biggest, uh, I think, California, New York, Washington State, or where the places have, uh, you know, where this virus has shown up the most here in the U.S. That's why you're seeing, like, again, the Emerald City Comic Con. But honestly, I would not be surprised if we start seeing other events uh, down the road um, get delayed this year. Even some, I, I could see, I, I very much could see, like, San Diego Comic Con getting postponed or, or canceled this year if they don't get this under control. And the fact is, no matter what they do, you know, I think they can reduce the spread, but I don't think they can stop it. And so, you know, I think there's just going to be this period until they get a vaccine developed where we're just going to have to deal with, you know, taking the most precautions we can, wash your hands, cover your mouth when you cough, things like that. But I, I think beyond that, I think, you know, you just, if you start to be sick, you need to consult a doctor and things like that. I mean, those are, I, I, I'm not going to go into the details of what you should do if you think you had the virus. Um, again, I do hope all you guys out there are, are going to stay, you know, do stay safe and healthy. 
Uh, I, my personal feeling is unless you have, you know, compromised health, unless you're already dealing with something that's compromised your health, or if you are, you know, somebody who is elderly, which probably a lot of you watching or don't fall in that category, but, you know, otherwise I would say just go about your life. Don't, you know, don't let the virus, you know, and I know it's difficult. You turn on the news and it sounds like the world is ending, but my honest opinion, and again, this is just my opinion, I would say go about your life, go to the movies, go out to dinner, whatever, you know, don't, don't be afraid to leave your house. Um, and, and, and like I said, that's just my own personal opinion. But again, as far as the toy industry goes, I definitely think you're going to see delays in product getting to shelf this year. So don't get mad. Don't get frustrated. They, they will get out. You know, the products will get released eventually. Um, so it just may take a little bit longer than originally thought. And, and, you know, and again, other things like events, conventions, things like that. I know some small toy shows in California have already been canceled. Again, the Emerald City Comic Con in Seattle, Washington, which was going to be next week, has postponed until summer. And honestly, I, I feel because there's been some, uh, I, I think as far as like you're hearing like summer, I think because originally I think there was some talk about how this virus uh, wouldn't uh, spread as much in, in warmer climates. But I think that that's actually not the case. Now, again, I'm not going to I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not going to get in. You know, if you want to seek out more actual information on the virus itself, there are better sources than me that you can go to to find that out. But but I, I, I do feel in my own personal opinion that that likely this is going to continue to affect things throughout the year. It's not just going to be in the in the winter months, um, which is why, again, I would not be surprised if we eventually hear something along the lines that like San Diego is postponed or canceled this year or, or what have you. But that's where I'm going to leave it there. Um, again, I hope all you guys stay safe, uh, stay healthy. Okay, now switching gears to a little bit uh, lighter front. Uh, let's first start off talking about Transformers. And this week we got new press images for the upcoming MP Masterpiece Tigertron, the Transformers Tigertron from the Beast Wars. So this one, I'm not a huge uh, Beast Wars collector. I haven't really gotten any of the masterpieces for Beast Wars. I thought the cartoon was really good, even though I didn't watch it year until years later. I didn't watch it when it originally came out. I never really got into the the toys, which is why I don't think uh, you know the masterpiece stuff uh, uh, excites me that much for it. But but I definitely know there's a lot of you guys who do like that stuff. And I gotta admit, I mean, based on these images, it is a nice looking toy. Um, even has some cool features like you can change the color of the eyes in its beast mode and you can actually have the eyes kind of move around so it's looking left to right. So definitely a very cool looking figure and if you're a fan of this character, um, I think it's one you're going to want to check out. It is up for pre-order now at places like our sponsor Big Bad Toy Store. And again, if you're a Beast War uh, Transformer collector, this is one that I think you'll probably want to add to your collection. We've got new official images for upcoming six inch Fortnite figures from Jazzware. So these figures were on display at Toy Fair. These are uh, part of their legendary line. They, they come with quite a few accessories. You know, they're only about 20 bucks each. They are available for pre-order on Amazon now. My favorite, the one I saw that uh, at Toy Fair that I really liked was a Beef Boss. Now, I don't play Fortnite at all. It's not a game that interests me in the slightest. But I do think some of the character designs from the game are kind of cool and interesting, unique in, in certain ways. And Beef, Beef Boss, he reminds me of like, a, you know, the Hamburglar uh, character from McDonald's. So uh, definitely kind of a cool. Another cool one was the character known as Galaxy with his translucent plastic. I thought that was a really cool looking figure. Then we've got the Molten battle hound uh rune and uh sentinel so uh all those are available for pre-order now on amazon and if you're into fortnite and you like the jazzware stuff you'll probably want to check those out for you AEW fans, we've got our first exclusive figure from the upcoming Jazzwares line. So this is a little bit of bubbly Chris Jericho. So it's a variant of the Chris Jericho figure that they're doing. Comes with the table, with the champagne. The packaging is made to look like a champagne bottle. And this figure is being offered as a ringside collectible exclusive. So if you want to get your hands on this one, it is available for pre-order on their website. Now, while we're on the subject of wrestling, another cool reveal from last month's Toy Fair that I thought comes from Mattel with the Slambulance uh, vehicle slash playset, the Wrecking Slambulance is what they call it. 
And um, even if you're not into wrestling, this might be something that you want to use with your six inch figures. It's an ambulance. If you watch wrestling at all, you've seen probably the skits where the ambulance will come down to ring or in the back and the wrestlers will go out for medical attention. And then of course somebody jumps them from behind. They start fighting, they get slammed into the ambulance, things like that. So this vehicle's talked with a lot of play accessories. It's in scale with the, the wrestling figures. Uh, that Mattel does and you know you can basically dent the side you can remove panels you can remove the windshield the coolest feature I thought was when you push a button on the engine block after you've opened up the hood or taken the hood completely off you can press a button on the engine block and it ejects out the back a, a rolling stretcher and of course you can strap your favorite wrestler in there and that is something again that you've seen in the skits where the wrestler goes uh, ro you know he's strapped in and he goes out the back rolling down the street or what have you so uh, I, I felt like that was a, kind of a real, really cool um, added accessory or feature to that vehicle now this vehicle will be out later this year the cost of it's going to be $39.99 I have confirmed that with Mattel and like I said even if you're not into wrestling this might be a vehicle if you're into six inch type action figures I think it'll scale pretty well with those and it might be something you want to check out Mezco Toys this week released official images and details for their 112 collective Mr. Freeze figure so we'd seen this figure on display at some of the conventions it is now up for pre-order at places like our sponsor Big Bad Toy Store Definitely looks like pretty, a pretty cool figure. It's got uh, things like an alternate head, multiple pairs of hands. You've got the clear helmet, which is removable. You've got the cryotech suit with light up functions, which is nice. You've got a belt with holster that is removable. You've got the gloves and boots. You've got his uh, ray gun, which also has a light up feature and a handgun. You've got an ice blast effect and a freeze effect. And of course, like with all the 112 collective figures, you get the display base, um, which you can use as a flight stand or as just a, a, a figure stand. And uh, like I said, this figure is available now for pre-order at places like our sponsor, Big Bad Toy Store. And if you're into Bat Villains, this is one you're probably going to want to check out. Okay, moving on to rumors slash new listings that have shown up online. So the reason why I list these as rumors is because Hasbro has not yet officially confirmed these. However, uh, when we've seen these types of listings in the past, they generally turn out to be true. But again, they have not been officially confirmed by Hasbro and sometimes they can change. So just keep that in mind. But first of all, uh, the guys over at Yak Face have, have dug up a few uh, listings. So first of all, it looks like we're getting another gaming greats figure. Uh, last video, I talked about the Force Unleashed Stormtrooper Commander, which has started to hit EB Game stores, uh, which actually is yet to be officially announced by Hasbro, but that one's definitely coming since it's already started to hit shelves. But it looks like there is another fourth Gaming Greats figure coming. And again, this one it looks like it's going to be based on the Force Unleashed video game. And this one is the Shadow Trooper, which they've done a couple different versions of in the three and three quarter inch line. With the six inch figure, I hope they end up make, uh, adding some translucent plastic with the blue highlights. I think that would look pretty cool and, and kind of make the figure look unique. They did a, a translucent version in the three and three quarter inch, but I think they could do an even better job with the six inch version. And then another listing that the guys at Yak Face dug up was from Walmart, and that is a, a Luke and Yoda two pack for the Black Series. Now, I'm guessing that this is going to be uh, the Dagobah Luke. It's supposed to be Empire Strikes Back related. So my guess is it's going to be the Dagobah Luke, the one that they showed off at San Diego or gave us our first look at San Diego Comic-Con last year, which mysteriously was not on display at Toy Fair this, this past uh, month. And so probably because maybe it's now a Walmart exclusive, um, I'm guessing that they're adding the Yoda with a backpack and so that you can have Luke, you know, carry him around like we saw in Empire Strikes Back. It's probably going to be released as a deluxe type figure now. Um, again, that's purely my speculation. The listing just says a, a Luke and Yoda two pack. I don't know if the Yoda figure will just be the same one they've done, you know, the, they did in the archive line or what have you. But that that is my guess on that one. And then finally for Star Wars, we have a new listing that has shown up on the Everest Wholesale website. These are a distributor primarily for Canada. And uh, we've actually got a lot of listings for uh, different Hasbro brands that I'm going to be talking about here. But for this one with Star Wars, it is a vintage collection playset. 
Now, I talked about a vintage collection playset coming before Toy Fair. Uh, rumors of that coming. Uh, it's supposed to be some type of uh, Bespin uh, playset, which I'm guessing is what this is. It doesn't specifically say Bespin. It just says a vintage collection playset. So, you know, we'll just have to speculate for now. But being that we saw a previous rumor about there being a Bespin playset, even though they did not announce anything for that at Toy Fair, I'm guessing that's what this is going to be. And like I said previously, my speculation is it's going to be very similar to how they did the um, Jabba playset uh, that they released as a Walmart exclusive. Uh, I think it was last year. But um, with this one, I guess it's probably going to be the carbon freeze chamber. Um, the, I guess technically, I mean, they've done a carbon freeze chamber for the three and three quarter inch line before uh, years ago for the power of the force line. So it's possible they may just end up re-releasing that in vintage collection packaging or something. Or like I said, it might be something more along the lines of, of what they did with the Jabba Palace playset. But um, again, uh, don't have it, you know, I'm, I'm speculate. it's purely my speculation that it's Bespin related, but there does appear to be some type of vintage collection playset in the works from Hasbro. Next up, let's uh, talk G.I. Joe. So these listings also come via the same uh, Everest Wholesale website. And so uh, we've got a number of new listings for the classified six inch line, uh, what looks to be a second wave. Now, keep in mind, uh, the, the listings here show code names. They're using code names to try and keep a secret of what the actual figures are going to be. So I can't tell you specifically what the characters are going to be. Uh, with Wave 1, they have Wave 1 listed, which we know 100% is going to include Roadblock, Duke, and Scarlet. We saw those figures on display at uh, Toy Fair last month. And then the likely two remaining figures in that wave is going to be a non-exclusive version of the Snake Eyes figure that's currently being released through the Hasbro Pulse website without as many accessories or the fancy packaging. And then Destro should round out the first wave. Again, the, those last two figures, Snake Eyes and Destro, are not 100% confirmed by Hasbro, but based on uh, numerous listings that have popped up in, in over the last couple months, those are what the likely two figures are going to be in wave one. But then we have uh, listings for wave two. And the most interesting thing about these listings is it looks like three of the figures in this wave are going to be movie-based. And I'm making the assumption that MV stands for movie. I'm almost sure that's what it stands for. And so these uh, three of the figures in the second wave are likely going to be based on the upcoming new Snake Eyes movie, which comes out later this year. So don't have any idea. Ladybug, you know, again, they're using uh, code names Ladybug, which I maybe indicates a female figure. Uh, I have no idea. Just totally guessing there. Uh, Scorpion is the second code name. Again, have no idea what that could be. And then Tarantula. Now that is likely going to be a movie-based Snake Eyes figure. Tarantula was the code name that they're using for Snake Eyes in the first wave. And being that this is a movie version of Tarantula, that most likely makes it that they're doing, and obviously it would make sense that they're going to do a movie version of Snake Eyes uh, along with a, a regular version. So uh, that that's the three movie figures in the wave. And then there's three other figures, uh, six figures total in the wave it looks like and again using a uh, code name so i have no idea what characters they're going to be though again these should not be movie related and we've got mosquito horsefly and rhino beetle so you know your guess is as good as mine i don't think there's any you know rhyme or reason for these names they just seem to be using names of bugs for gi joe um, to hide uh, what the actual figures are going to be but definitely looks like a second wave is is going to soon be on the way after the first wave and then beyond the classified stuff, we also have listings for a product that I am making an assumption is going to be geared more for the kids. So, you know, you know, Hasbro is going to do kids stuff with the movie and everything coming out. Now, um, the thing to probably note here is it does not look like there's any three and three quarter inch stuff. It looks like they're going to stick with the six inch scale, even for the kids stuff. We've seen them do that with Marvel, uh, where you get the Marvel Legends and then you get the, the six inch figures, which are actually a little bit shorter than Marvel Legends, but still listed as six inch figures. They're not as detailed. They don't have as much articulation. And it looks like they're going to be doing the same thing with G.I. Joe. We're also getting some role play items. We're getting an electronic sword, uh, a mask, probably Snake Eyes mask. 
mask. We're getting Titan Hero figures, the 12 inch basic figures that they do for all their different brands. And then, like I said, the six inch, what they're called Ninja figures, which I'm guessing are based on the movie. And then also, while they don't list a specific, so the figures, they say core six inch Ninja figures, but then they also list core Ninja figures and vehicle assortment. So I'm guessing those are also gonna be six inch scale but they don't specifically say what the scale is with that listing. So that's only assumption on my part. I, I would find it hard to believe they're gonna do core figures in six inch and then do vehicles in a smaller scale. So the thing about this is, while again, these are gonna likely be geared more for the kids, they're not gonna be highly detailed or what have you, it still should be interesting to see what they actually come up with and you know, possibly even something that could be compatible with your classified figures. Uh, no details on what kind of vehicles, just that we are getting some type of assortment of figures and vehicles coming for G.I. Joe. And then the final one is the Ninja Strike 12 inch Snake Eyes, which if you know other lines are an indication, this is probably gonna be a 12 inch figure that has electronic sounds or, or lights, pro probably sounds with Snake Eyes of some type, sword clashing or things like that. Maybe moves its arms, you know, swings its sword, something like that. But that's generally what those uh, types of figures generally um, are if you look at things like Marvel and Star Wars and stuff. Again, nothing specifically saying three and three quarter inch. So, um, you know, it looks like for now at least Hasbro is not going to be um, taking on that scale with G.I. Joe. And then finally on the Marvel front, uh, we have some listings that pre pretty much just further confirm rumors that I've previously talked about. Um, again, these most of these listings use code names, so we really don't have any idea what the actual figures are going to be. But we have a listing for an Eternals wave that's going to be coming this year. Uh, seven figures are listed for it. They're just listed as Eternals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So again, I have absolutely no idea what the characters will be. This will probably be a mixture of movie and comic-based figures, but I have no indication of that from these listings. But definitely looks like an Eternals uh, wave is going to be coming at the end of the year. Further confirmation of a Venom wave coming later this year. Um, again, uh, using code names, so have no idea what the specific figures are. Indications are this wave will be out sometime around October. And then uh, Deadpool, the Deadpool wave is listed as well, uh, which we pretty much, I talked about that wave, you know, with the strong guy. I, I believe this is referencing the strong guy build a figure wave um, that we know most of the figures on. Um, and I talked about the two uh, remaining figures that are rumored for the wave in my last news video. Finally, some listings for fan channel exclusives. Now, one that we've not seen before is this one that says Marvel Legends Eternals villain deluxe figure. So I have no idea what that's going to be, but it looks like some type of deluxe figure with an Eternals theme to it. Your guess is as good as mine. It's not going to be a Celestial, but you know it is going to be some type of bigger character. Maybe Lockjaw, even though I don't know if Lockjaw would really fall under Eternals, but you know who knows. It would be cool if it was a six-inch scale Lockjaw. Um, and then we've got uh, Vintage Fantastic Four Redeco. I'm guessing that, you know, I talked about uh, a couple news videos ago about how there had been a listing for uh, a Doctor Doom figure in white. So I'm guessing that's what that is going to be. You know, the Future Foundation look, just the, take the Doctor Doom figure they just released and painted it white. And then also Toxin, which is one that we've seen uh, listed previously. This is gonna probably be some type of repaint of one of the Venom figures or something, um, maybe with some added features or, or sculpting, but, but primarily it's gonna likely be some type of, of repaint. But um, those are the Marvel listings that we have for now. And as more details on these become available, of course, I will share that with you in a future video. Okay, so that's it for today. I'd love to hear your thoughts on everything I talked about. Let me know in the comments section below. As always, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification so you're alerted every time I upload a new video. Of course, as always, you know, please consider signing up for the TNI newsletter. A link to that is in the video description below. We've got contests giving away $100 store credits to Big Bad Toy Store and both Marvelous News and Toy News International. Links to those contest details are also in the video description below. And until next time, guys. I'll catch you later. Hey, thanks for watching today's video and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that bell notification to alert it every time I upload a new video. And be sure to head over to the Toy News International and Marvelous News Message Sports Communities. It's a great place to talk toys and win cool contests like $100 store credits to Big Bad Toy Store. And remember, action figures are great.